Matthew chapter 21, would you begin reading with me at verse 18, please? The Bible says, now in the morning when he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. Seeing this, the disciples were amazed and asked, how did the fig tree wither all at once? And Jesus answered and said to them, truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And all the things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. I want you to picture the scene. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem as we've been reading and reminding us uh, uh, of his humanity, we, we see here that Jesus is hungry. He sees a fig tree. And it's important for us, uh, I, I think, to grasp the significance of uh, a fig tree. It was a, a symbol that, that these disciples would have been familiar with as the, the prophets of old had used this, well, the same figure to describe the, the nation of Israel and its, um, its demise. And so he comes to the fig tree, and this particular fig tree, it has leaves in it. And if there's leaves, there should be fruit, you 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 would think, but there there isn't. It has the look of, of being healthy, but there's no fruit. And, and Jesus pronounces prophetically with symbolism, no longer shall there be any fruit from you. And can you imagine right then this uh, this fig tree, it withers. Now, you, you can only imagine their astonishment, right? They're, they're amazed. But the question for me, why are they amazed? You know, the miracle, possibly, I, I guess, not something you see every single day. But, but these are the same people who have seen Jesus do just incredible things, even raising um, people from the dead. So I, I think maybe for once, I think maybe they get what Jesus is getting at here. And they understand what he's saying, because the fig tree here it represents the nation of Israel. How they're going to be judged for, for their rebellion and for the unbelief and, and, and even the, their demise, how quickly it's going to, to happen. And so from this tree, Jesus, like the prophets of old, he uses, um, he goes from the, the imagery of a tree and the imagery of a mountain to make his point. And, and he tells them that they're going to be able to do what he has done to the point of, of throwing a mountain into the sea if they have faith. Now, now mountains in scripture would often represent nations and, and, and power. And I think here's the idea, the, the kingdom of God, the church that, that Jesus will establish, it's going to be greater and stronger than, than any kingdom, any, any nation. And, and like Jesus, these men, the Lord's chosen men, the apostles, they're going to pronounce judgments against all nations that attempt to stand against the Lord, stand against his kingdom, his church, including the judgment that's going to come to Israel, which we, we know came in the form uh, of Rome. And when Jesus returns to heaven to sit on the throne, which is going to be happening soon, as we're reading here, the, the apostles, they would carry on his work of, of preaching the kingdom of God, pronouncing judgment. You know, for us today, I want us to think about this fig tree, a fruit tree with leaves, but no fruit. And, you know, from the glance of an eye, maybe having the appearance of health, but there's no fruit. There's no results. You know, we're talking about fruit in, in, in Scripture. We're talking about that spiritual difference that one makes, and typically in the lives of others. You know, what about us? You know, maybe to our, our, our friends and neighbors, we, we look like a, a picture of spiritual health, right? After all, we go to church and and we don't use foul language and we don't sit out in the driveway with them and drink and cuss and do all of these things. We're not sleeping around. And um, But what are we doing? Are we bearing fruit? Are we making that positive spiritual difference in the lives of others? Are we spreading the message of Jesus to others? Are, are, are we presenting the right, representing Christ in the right way by way of, of, of our examples? Or are we simply just going through the motions? Are we just playing church? Are we more invested? Here's a question for us right here and right now. Are we more invested in this earthly kingdom and all that it offers than the Lord's kingdom and all that it is offered? Something to think about. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Father, for another week in your word, Father, we're so thankful. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. You have blessed us so richly, Father. We're thankful for answered prayers. So thankful that Clarice is better. So thankful that 
uh, Rachel's procedure went well that she was able to have it father we're so thankful that dad's results from his heart cath came back good father we're thankful for the improvement of our sister Joan Case father we're uh, we're, we're mindful of uh, of so many father that that you have blessed and so many Betty Adams that's improving is able to be with us father and None of these things, Father, are lost on us, and we are just so very thankful that you have heard us, that you have answered our prayer, and Father, we continue to pray your will be done in all things, Father. Father, we ask that you would bless us in this upcoming week as we come together Sunday through Wednesday to, to study your word, to be refreshed, Father, thankful for our brother Lois Lee, who is coming our way. Father, be with him and his wife, give them safe travels. Father, may much good from come from our efforts uh, this coming week, Father. Bless us, be with our young people, continue to be with the Hart family. Continue to be with us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.